so we Eduardo sort of had the vision of of doing some stuff with with Camelina as far back as I remember 2010 he was talking about it um, so we sort of our first foray into this was with broiler chickens and at the time we didn't really know anything about Camelina meal we had some basic lab analysis and whatever but we didn't know anything about digestible nutrient values or anything like that so we ran a trial and again this was in order primarily to gather safety data and also to look at whether the broilers would basically go on a hunger strike as eduardo put it um you know once we started putting the stuff into their diets so what we did is is our diets were actually not sort of you know sort of commercial performance type diets it was actually a combination of 76 percent of a phase grower starter finisher depending on the age of the bird but then the other 24 percent of the diet was either cornstarch or camelina cake substituted in at eight percent intervals okay so we had 0 8 16 and 24 percent dietary inclusion in the study so obviously we didn't balance things out for amino acids and, and everything like that we were really just looking to see whether we would find any toxicity issues and whether the birds would actually back off their feed so what i've got here is just a little table and just as a little bit of a cue to to the charts that i show you here the bar graphs rather than putting a's and b's and all this stuff in there if you see an arrow that means that it is significantly higher or lower than the control okay so as you can see in the starter phase we actually saw higher feed intake as you added uh camelina cake now it doesn't mean it's anything magical what it means is they just really didn't like cornstarch okay because that we were the zero percent diet had 24 percent cornstarch in it they didn't like it um but as we went on we found sort of a similar trend in the grower phase so at the very least what this kind of told us is we weren't really that concerned even at 24 percent inclusion with large-scale feed rejection that's basically what what you can take away from this slide now um in terms of average daily gain uh really what we saw is what i think could be best characterized as a as a protein effect as we started putting cameline in there obviously it's supplying protein to the diet there's no protein in cornstarch so really what we saw was you know a protein effect okay so as you can see um, all the way up uh, through the growth phases as you add cameline to the diet in particular if you look at the the finisher phase here from day 29 to 42 the bird it seemed that about 16 percent camelina cake seemed to give us the the optimal average daily gain and uh, feed efficiency, we didn't see any differences in the starter phase. Um, again, that 16% diet uh, seemed to give us the best feed efficiency. So at, at day 42, um, basically our, our control birds were about uh, two, two and a quarter kilos. And again, um, when we started adding camelina into the diet, we ended up with heavier birds and it kind of peaked out there uh at about 16 percent at 24 percent we did see them back off on their feed um and as a result we ended up with birds that statistically were as big as the control birds but again keep in mind the main goal of this study was just to illustrate that the the birds would actually eat camelina and that it wouldn't kill them and it didn't um now we got together um with the folks at the university of saskatchewan under uh, dr tom scott um and they really were the the ones who uh, sort of led the effort uh to get camelina cake registered as a feedstuff for poultry in canada and what we did is we kind of split up the work we took on all the layer stuff they took on all the broiler stuff and um they looked at at uh, putting up to 24 percent in their diets uh they, were, they did a couple of different projects um i can't it, it would take too long to explain the rationale about how they came up with their diet pardon me their diets but one of the big things that we have observed because we've talked to a couple of other research groups uh who have done stuff with camelina cake processing of the cake matters big time in this case they hammer milled the stuff it got very fine 
And I was showing you that slide earlier where there's the big difference in non-starch polysaccharides. They ended up with birds that had it caked around their beaks. And in their first experiment, they had a wreck. The birds just, they went off feed altogether because they were walking around with, you know, these big beards of camelina cake around their, their mouths. So, um, they seem to um, get things sorted out here for the second experiment. And that's, uh, I, I'm, I'm just going to highlight some of their work. And again, this is, uh, this is some uh, data from Dr. Tom Scott. This is part of the application that went into CFIA. So they broke their experiment up into two phases, uh, a zero to 21 day and then 22 to 35. So it was just a, a two phase experiment. And again, fairly small scale. Um, and in the starter phase, which is the green bars, they found that once you went up above 12%, you started to see a drop off in feed intake. But interestingly, in that grow finish phase, uh, the you know, the day 22 to 35, there was no statistical difference, at least in feed intake. Uh, in terms of feed efficiency uh, in the starter phase or sort of day zero to, to 21, they saw that as you start putting it in, in there, you started seeing a linear decrease in feed efficiency. Uh, and again, I should point out these diets were not formulated to consistent digestible nutrient levels. They were just, again, like we were trying to see whether they could get the birds to eat it. And uh, as you can see, feed efficiency suffered as soon as you went over 12%. So this kind of explains the rationale behind the approval by CFIA for 12%. It was actually dictated by the way the experiment was set up, which is kind of a uh, something to keep in mind here. Um, so again, what they saw in their experiment is uh, the uh, at day 35, there was no statistical difference between birds up to 12%. Uh, 18%. I mean, they had, you know, little pygmy birds running around the barn here. So, so big difference, uh, I think, had to do with the way they processed their feed and also the approach that was taken uh, to formulating the diets between the experiment we did a few years ago and the one that they did. And again, I should point out at the time these experiments were done, we didn't have any information on nutrient digestibility in uh, Camelina. Um, so just uh, to fill in that gap a little bit, uh, Dr. Tafuka Wayengo, who's a postdoc with uh, Dr. Ruth Zilstra at the university, uh, they did a little project, very simple little digestibility project, where they compared uh, camelina cake fed to broilers, where they provided them with an enzyme or no enzyme. And this is a corn-based diet. So what I've got here is these, this is the percent of the respective nutrients here that was digested by the birds. The one thing that should stand out to you here is how low the energy digestibility, and this is a cake, okay? So this is 10% oil. So this is where those carbohydrates that are in the neutral detergent factor, or neutral detergent fiber fraction, that's where these start to come into play. And lo and behold, you add some enzyme to the diet and it helped quite a bit with the energy digestibility. So in, in the same way that some of these uh, fiber digesting enzymes you add to wheat or barley based diets help. Uh, we think it also helped here. But here's the interesting thing. In red, these are digestibility coefficients for the same nutrients in a sample of canola cake. Uh, so again, we're trying to compare apples to apples just to give you a reference point. If you look at the amino acids, basically camelina is as good or better on a percentage basis when you look at amino acid digestibility. But of course, as Eduardo said, when you multiply this out and it, you know, camelina does have a lower amino acid content right now. And I should point out, there has been very little selection pressure applied to camelina. If you apply some of the molecular genetics that, that we have now to camelina, five years from now, what we'll be talking about is going to be very, very different. Um, and again, just to compare here to canola, what you can see, again, um, with enzyme, canola cake, uh, there's a, a bit of a benefit for uh, canola cake if we're talking about lysine, but the rest of the amino acids, actually, especially arginine, not too bad. Camelina comes out pretty good, but that number up at the top, big problem, okay? Canola cake, you've got nearly 2,800 kilocalories. Uh, you can knock about 800 off there uh, when you're talking about camelina cake. So what we learned, 12% inclusion, you shouldn't run into any serious uh, feed refusal issues. 
it's a very good source of amino acids, at least on a digestibility basis. But the energy content is something we're going to have to work on, either through processing or breeding or something.